Happy Black History Month! Yelani, play Before I Let Go by Frankie Beverly over yeah. this. Obviously, in honor of Black History Month, today's video is going to be a book recommendation video. So, this is going to be like Black History Month book recommendation and my February TBR. Should we start off with my TBR? I guess we should start off with my TBR because I'm going to go through those pretty quickly and I don't have much to say about any of those books other than like a tiny synopsis and maybe where I got the recommendation from. So, A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams. My mom read the arc for this book. She absolutely adored it and she said I need to read it as soon as possible. So I've pre-ordered the Kindle version and I will be doing a reading vlog on it. I'm just letting you know that now. I'm letting you know that now. Anyway, then I have Ophie's Ghost by Justina Ireland. I've heard about this book on Helena by the Books Book Talk. I got the book recommendation from her. Um, her book review on that book sold me and I just purchased it. So it's on the way to my house. Pachinko by Min Jim Lee. I cannot wait to read that book. I heard that it's like a generational saga set in Japan and it's like multiple different family members, multiple different generations going on. Outdrawn by Deanna Gray. I got that book recommendation from Sarah Read That. I trust everything Sarah recommends. Lore of the Wilds by Annalie Sobrana. That one is a fae fantasy book and I put that on hold in my local library so hopefully it'll get here very soon. I don't know if I'm gonna read one of these books or both of these books but Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verges or White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I'm kind of leaning more towards White Teeth by Zadie Smith because I heard that this one is just a little bit happier. And I truly, truly can't take anything sad right now. Sorry. I was going to put As Long As Elementary Tree Girls on my TBR for this month. It cannot happen. And then I also have The Street by Ann Petrie. This is a classic set in New York, set in Harlem. I don't know. But my mom has read it and she loved it and I know I'm going to absolutely adore it. So yeah, those are the books you can anticipate me reading in February. I'll of course be giving you updates throughout the month. Let's get into the book recommendations. I have one, two, three, four, six different books that I'm going to talk about in today's video. Here's the stack. This is kind of like my black book starter pack. We have some romance, we have some classic, we have some non-fiction, short stories, and literary fiction. You kind of have a good basis. We're going to start off with the book I feel like I talk about the most on my channel because I'm obsessed with it. I'm obsessed with everything about this book. Real by Kennedy Ryan. This book is taking place in the film and theater industry. It is a romance between Neva, this Broadway actress, and Canon, this film director. It's a forced proximity and sort of forbidden romance because they end up starting a project with each other where Neva is the main character and Canon is obviously the director. Canon? I need more romance books like these. Y'all know I love romance books that are very realistic and kind of pragmatic when it comes to how the story is being told and like the things that the characters do individually and together and this was definitely that. I feel like this is Kennedy Ryan's most underhyped book and for what? Because of straight gas. I read Before I Let Go and I like this one more. Book 2 to this series is coming out this year so you should put that on your radar too after you finish this because you're literally going to be so obsessed after you finish this. Highly recommend probably my favorite romance book of all time. Me just doing random stuff while recording. Beloved by Toni Morrison. This is a classic. One of the most haunting classics ever. Like this book is extremely eerie and subtly terrifying but it's so good it's full of subliminal messages and it's such good storytelling such good prose and descriptions and writing this book follows a woman named setha who is being haunted by the daughter that she murdered i'm not sure if this is a spoiler so skip ahead a little bit if you don't want to know why setha killed her daughter and you want to find out as you read skip ahead but she pretty much kills her daughter because her ex-slave owner comes and finds her and tries to take her and her children back to the plantation and Setha attempted to kill 
all three of her kids but only succeeded in killing one of them that one being beloved so beloved kind of comes back in flesh form and she had already been haunting the house that Setha lives in now but she comes back as a person like she she reincarnates like I don't know it's spooky <laughs> it's just exploring like the terrifying after effects of slavery and the kind of psychological ripple effect of slavery and like the gravity of that trauma it is such a good exploration it's so so good i highly recommend highly highly recommend everything that tony morrison writes is gas there's quite literally not a bad tony morrison book highly recommend that one if you didn't if you didn't gather that from the three times i said it on to non-fiction I have Asada by Asada Shakur. Whenever anybody tells me that they're new to reading nonfiction, I recommend this book because it kind of reads as a fiction because it's very entertaining, but there's also so much knowledge and wisdom into it. Asada Shakur is like one of the most revolutionary women of our time. And this book kind of follows her and her, her wrongful incarceration, but it also kind of dapples into her childhood and how she became a member of the Black Panther Party and things like that kind of all about her entire life and her escaping prison and fleeing to cuba it's so good it's like i said it's so entertaining but it's also full, full of so much wisdom as you can see i like tabbed it and everything i'm obsessed with this book i love this book mina recommended this book to me and i haven't stopped thinking about it since i read it last summer and this is a hot girl summer read don't let anybody convince you otherwise like you sitting on the beach reading this you're hot and well read. I don't make the rules. Another nonfiction is one of my most recent reads. Soil by Camille T. Dungy. This one is a memoir about this black woman and her garden. It's kind of following her as she strengthens her marriage and raises her daughter while also trying to um, get closer with the earth by having this flower garden. It's full of nature imagery. It's full of fun facts about gardens. It's, it's full of kind of the relation to solitude and having like your own personal paradise and having a garden, those type of things. And it's just so good. As a gardening girly myself, I loved it. And I don't hear many people talk about this book. Y'all should definitely go read it. Then, I have The Secret Lives of Church Ladies, which is a short story collection. This is written by Disha Filia. And it's pretty much about these lives of church ladies, obviously. But, like, they're kind of sinister secrets and the kind of questionable things that they do in the church and outside of the church as a Christian. It's very messy, which I appreciate. And it's so good. It also has, like, some exploration of being queer and queerness and misogyny adultery and those type of things like it's very detailed and it also has like some toxic mother daughter dynamics within it and it's so interesting and intriguing and just so good and so messy and so juicy i highly recommend this book I, I love a good drama my favorite stories from the from this book is peach cobbler not a shocker to anybody eula and how to make love to a physicist Noelle Gallinger and Bookworm Nye on Bookstagram recommended this book and I'm so happy that they did because I absolutely love this book and it is one of my first short story collections so if you have any other short story collection recommendations please let me know. I have a few on my TBR. This is Nye by the way. You should definitely go follow her on Bookstagram. Focus, focus, focus. Oh. During Black History Month? <laughs> last book that is like part of my black book starter pack i'm also going to show y'all a few of the other books written by black authors and about black people that are on my tbr in general i probably won't read them this month but the last book i have to recommend though is open water by kayla bazuma nelson <sighs> this book is like part romance part literary fiction and it's pretty much an exploration on the kind of psychological trauma of a black man and how outside forces and generational trauma and trauma that you experience yourself impacts romantic relationships. It's so sad. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's short, but I was sobbing, you know? Uh, I just highly recommend this book and it's 
the romance is taking place between a photographer and a dancer so it also has like the artistic life exploration within it also which I really adore y'all know I love books about artists it's so good it's so elegant it also has tons of new music references so if you listen to stuff like Kendrick Lamar Curtis Mayfield which I do I'm telling you girly I'm telling you those are the books that I'm recommending I've read them already. I, I'm obsessed with them. I know that these are great books. You should read them. Ten toes down, you should read them. Now, here are a few books that I have not read yet. I cannot tell you that they're good and like this is the best book ever. You should go read them. But they are on my TBR and I do want to get to them very soon. And they're written by black authors and about black characters. So, some of these are also kind of African diaspora, indigenous diaspora, just all different types of black people. So if you're looking for a few more recommendations than those that I've recommended already, here they are. I'm just going to talk about these. I have tons more on my shelf, but like we're, we will literally be here all day. So The Final Strife by Sarah El Arifi. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. I probably did. This is a African inspired fantasy book. Um, the premise behind this novel is kind of this divided kingdom that is separated by the color of their blood. I can't wait to read this. All We Were Promised by Ashton Lattimore. This comes out April 2nd, 2024, so we should put it on your radar. This one is a historical fiction. I'll probably read this very soon. It's like this very unlikely group of women that come together to uh, save one of their friends is what I'm getting from the back of this. It's what I'm, this sounds very juicy. I can't wait to read it. Another nature book, Among Flowers by Jamaica Kincaid. I've heard a lot about this book. I can't wait to read it. I heard about this book from Anna Wallace Johnson here on YouTube. You should definitely go subscribe to her. These two books I already showed you, Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verges and White Teeth by Zadie Smith. Also, anything written by Zadie Smith. I started her essay collection feel free I'm not gonna pull it off from under that stack down there but it's down there here it is it's that last one right there yup 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 firekeeper's daughter this is a thriller and fantasy it's also indigenous culture from what I've heard so the water dancer by Tani Hesse Coates I can't wait to get into Tani Hesse Coates writing this year I also have his nonfiction between the world and me can't wait to read that this one is historical fiction I don't know if I said that the Talented Ripkins by Laddie Hubbard. I'm kind of saving this for summer because I know this will be such a hot girl summer read because it's a magical realism fiction about this fantastical family and it's set in Florida. I just think it'll be a hot girl read for the summer. The Dead Are Gods by Ernie Carson. This one is a memoir about this woman losing her best friend. The author actually sent this to me. Thank you so much, Queen. I've heard a lot about this from the people that I trust a lot on bookstagram like interested in black books which if you're looking for more black book recommendations you should go follow interested in black books let me pull her up for you let me pull her up for you she also has a book club where she chooses a different black book to read a month so go follow her I love <laughs> And then Butter Honey Pig Bread is a Nigerian based book. I think this is also historical fiction and dual POV about these two twins and their mom. Anyway, it has some mythology in it and it just sounds so interesting and so whimsical. I think this is also magical realism. And then the last book. The last book. Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks. I'm pretty sure this is a Caribbean diaspora book. Um, like I said, I am trying to read outside of the kind of American diaspora. This is also, I, I want to say that this is either contemporary fiction or literary fiction. I do not think that this is historical fiction. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found something new to read. Like I said, all of those books that I just talked about, I have not read yet. I cannot tell you that they are good or bad. They're probably fire though. I'm just being honest. These books... Are absolute five star bangers and you should absolutely read them i can tell you that for sure for sure thanks for watching hope you found something new to read <laughs>